Hello everyone and welcome back to Sip Skylines 2 where we are developing East Haven County, a sort of realistic fictional county uh, located on the southeastern coastline of the state of Massachusetts. Now in the most recent couple of episodes we've been developing a, an entirely new city here on this island here and you might have noticed that I've turned the mountain that used to be here into a hill because a few of you were quick to point out that there aren't really uh, any mountains in eastern Massachusetts and while we do take liberties then I guess having a massive uh, volcano mountain thing here is probably a bit of a stretch. Uh, we, we still have mountains on the edges of the map that I can't really do all that much about. Um, that's just a limitation and I think it's okay because they're kind of far away. Anyways, with the uh, previous episodes focusing on urban developments, uh, in this episode we'll move across this strait of water here to the, I guess you would call this the mainland, uh, where we'll be transforming much of this into uh, agricultural uh, space, uh, rural countryside basically. Now looking at the type of agriculture that dominates Massachusetts, I was a bit surprised to find out that greenhouses as well as like flower fields and stuff like that actually plays a pretty prominent role so it's not just dominated by like grain or livestock farming uh, and I'm gonna try and keep that in mind as much as possible when we transform this entire area and quickly before we begin if you enjoy my content consider liking this video it's a small thing but it really helps out and consider subscribing and enabling notifications if you don't want to miss out on future uploads or votes on the community page thanks in advance all right, so before we start mapping out new infrastructure for this area, I'm going to fix something based on feedback from you guys, as a few of you were quick to point out that this uh, sunken uh, roundabout here with these walls is probably uh, not fun for truckers, 18 wheelers or buses even. Uh, it's very restrictive. So we're going to redo this by just quickly deleting it and then just do a proper sunken version instead uh, yeah i guess i don't know i was uh i did, I did create this one a, a bit quick in uh, a couple of episodes ago when we made it um should have just done it done it correctly the first time because if you're gonna redo it you're gonna spend the time on it anyways but uh, yeah my bad <laughs> anyways we're just uh, gonna use terraforming this time around so that we can ensure that it's just proper sunken and that there's ample space for uh, for the truckers to get their trucks through this passage. Simple connections here and then maybe a medium sized roundabout and then we can connect our off ramps as such and we'll have to go out a bit over here because otherwise it's gonna act up since uh, it's a bit uh, it's at a bit of an angle here and that's that's not great so we're gonna try that again and I might try this technique and then just flip it and still not great and I think that's good enough without really being perfect. But it's, it's always a bit tricky to branch off uh, with all frames when you have to follow the, the curvature here. Uh, but I do think this is a little better and we might even go and smoothen the terrain here a bit. And possibly add a key wall to these segments of the rail tracks here. Cool. That should make it a little easier for, uh, for larger vehicles. So just like when we develop infrastructure and roads in particular for cities, we're going to have a road hierarchy out here. Um, the, the biggest type of road we'll have, except for the actual uh, interstate, is going to be the two lane uh, rural highway we'll be using here. And that's like the main arterial, uh, which we'll have a few of. <laughs> And then in between, the, uh, in between the, the highways, I think we're gonna branch off with the alleys and we might even use some gravel roads to like simulate dirt, dirt paths. Um, but I'm just gonna start by, I'm gonna enable contours here. So we've got an idea of the, the, the slopes. Uh, and then we're just gonna create some main roads that kind of cut through this area. 
And I'm not gonna adhere to a strict grid or anything like that because, um, well, for one, the farming mechanics in City Skylands 2 work wonderfully uh, and gives you a lot of freedom when creating your farms. Um, and I'm gonna use developer mode and like surface painting and stuff like that to create a more interesting farming area uh, than you'd usually see, hopefully at least. Uh, so I don't really. I don't really feel the need to ad adhere to a grid to make it easier on myself. If we create like a, a small town or two in here, uh, we might have a few streets uh, at grid angles just to make it easy to get that uh, commercial developments in. But otherwise, we're just going to try and follow the contours here as much as possible. We've got a bit of a ridge here, which I want to avoid. And I think as we approach this area here, we are going to move into an elevated segment. I think here we're going to split the road into two. So we will have a branch. Cuts down this ridge here. Let's see. Make sure the decline is not too great. And then we can go underneath here and then we'll have uh, the main road kind of continue alongside here and meet up over here as well. Or actually, I think we can just go in here and create an intersection. A uh, bit of an interesting road layout for sure. Just going to continue uh, this road here. Gonna f try and follow the coastline as much as possible. And then let's see if we can get real close to connecting here without having uh, too crazy of a... There's a bit of a height difference here really, so I want to get really close. And that should be fine. Now there's a very long distance between this crossing and this underpass here, so I want to have an underpass around here as well. I think that would be... Uh, pretty interesting uh, probably a little expensive from like an infrastructure perspective but yeah i mean expensive things are fun to look at in game so we're going for it so i'm gonna try and add a node here and gonna make sure that i have the nodes i need over here as well anyways i'm gonna turn these into bridge segments and then we're gonna get our road to go underneath here and we don't need to go too low. Something like this is probably sufficient. Maybe we have to be we have to be a bit lower over here at least. So I'll grab a contour line here. Something like this. Great. Then we'll use our slope tool. Right click up here. Bring that up. And in this case, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to right click down here and then curve down the hill here that didn't really work there you go then we're gonna curve up here Let's see snake our way through and 10 is a little too aggressive i feel so i'm gonna right click all the way over here and then just try and make this a little smoother just so we're at least below 10%. And then I think I'm just going to go straight through here, ignoring all the contour lines, basically. Bringing that up, and then we'll join these two together. There we go. And I think this looks pretty nice, uh, pretty organic. It has a few oddities as well, but that's very often the case in real life as well, so... It's fine by me and we might as well use some of the tools we have available to try and make things in here just a bit more interesting uh, so some retaining walls and then if we jump into a soft and terrain tool we can hopefully add some to these walls yeah we've got like a gradual um wall here looks looks pretty good i'll see if we need that anywhere else I think here we can we can do the very same thing. 
Might even add a key wall to the other side as well to really make it interesting. There we go. I'm gonna expand the key wall over here. And we might as well just add wall segments here as well. And I think the cool thing with the key walls is that even if you don't really terraform to showcase it, it still adds this, you know, barrier uh, that you would probably add at a place where there's uh, a risk of of falling to your death if you uh, if you drive badly or drive during snow or something like that. I know that's a bit morbid, but you know what I mean. And I think we're going to add just uh, one additional highway connection uh, alongside the southbound direction of Massachusetts Route 28. Uh, I think this would be a good, good spot to have an off-ramp and an off-ramp as well. Uh, we're not going to do ramps on both sides, at least not for now. Uh, but we will start by, by just adding so that you can get on and off from the southbound direction at least. And I'm hopeful that I can just create something really simple here. Uh, but we'll see. Grab our off ramp. Is this too cheeky? And then I need to be careful here and see if I can create a proper alignment. Are we going to have a roundabout here? We are. Tons of roundabouts in the US, I tell you guys. All right, let's try and move down to the other side here. Um, here I'd like an on and off ramp from the northbound direction of Massachusetts Route 28. And it's uh, going to be a bit of a squeeze, um, but I do think that if I play my cards right, we can create uh, a compact off ramp at least. So if we just if we upgrade this segment here and we upgrade the segment down here as well, then we just need a two lane highway to kind of start here i guess and then move sneak its way down the hill here eight eight percent that is fine uh oh, it gets very steep here but it's not as bad if i snake my way down here although this is gonna get pretty bad let's see nah, i think that's fine <laughs> it's good enough <laughs> And then we are gonna try and branch off here, but that's probably a little too aggressive. Uh, maybe uh, branching off a little sooner and then something like this, perhaps. That's probably a little better and then just upgrade the segment. Oops. I'll just get that fixed. Okay, never mind. Disable snapping, so we have full control. And then we're gonna disable the lift here. Pause. Going to add a key segments just because of the wall we get then. And this is probably fine actually. We'll just move in here and and downgrade this to a two lane segment. And there you go. Sweet. <laughs> it looks a bit odd. Uh, I'll be honest, but I mean, I really do like these uh, kind of. Uh, unconventional uh small builds and if you look at us highway infrastructure enough on google maps you will see that they have lots of small areas where they've done uh, weird uh, sometimes even dangerous stuff so it's not completely out of the realm of possibility i feel anyways what i like to do is uh, move in and add uh, keys to the insides of this uh, of the interstate here and once again, uh, solely due to the, the walls that are added. And then I need to make sure that we don't have trees growing in here. I think that's a little, yeah, that's a bit weird, maybe. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and add these, at least where we've got uh, interchanges. And delete the trees. And then let's just take a little look at what we've built. So this is the, the first one which has a uh, on and off ramp from the southbound direction of route 28 and then here in the very center of this farming area or countryside we've got uh, a full uh, interchange where you can get on and off in both directions and here we've got 
a northbound off and on ramp. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. This also concludes like the, the big arterials and uh, interstate connections, at least for now. Uh, so the next step is adding in these alleys throughout. Uh, and I'm just going to be pretty liberal with these. Uh, and I don't mean that in a US political sense. Uh, they're not progressive alleys uh, or something like that. I'm just going to be a liberal in like just throwing them in everywhere. Uh, sometimes they're going to be real close to each other uh, at weird angles. And other times they're going to be uh, in small strict grids. And yeah, just kind of segment up this uh, this whole area here. Should be a lot of fun because these are what's really going to they're going to add um, that extra character that's going to help us turn this into a countryside area that's that hopefully looks and feels cozy. Now, the cool thing with uh, Anarchy and developer mode uh, surface painting is that we've got some uh, we've got some extra liberties when it comes to actually creating the, the farms I'll be creating, uh, but I'm going to showcase you that in uh, not too long when we get there. Uh, but it also means that it gives me a bit of extra freedom in creating these uh, road layouts uh, because when I know that I have the possibility of creating bigger farms than the vanilla game allows, then obviously that kind of translates into me having a bit more freedom in creating these uh, small alleys as well. And we're already off to a pretty good start. And once again, I, I try to somewhat adhere to the control lines, but without letting it completely restrict how I built the roads. I do want some, some freedom as well. And, you know, you can just buy a 4x4 if you can't get anywhere out here. Right, so I'm uh, pretty happy with the layout we've got now. Um, we might add in additional uh, small roads if uh, if the lot sizes here get too big, but there's nothing you know stopping us from having only half the lot here being occupied by a farm and then the rest be forest or a small suburban subdivision. So I think this is a pretty good start. So yeah, since greenhouses are quite a big thing in uh, agriculture in Massachusetts, uh, I think I'm going to start by trying to create uh, like a cookie cutter uh, greenhouse farm or yeah, I don't know if that's quite how you'd say it, but uh, that's at least how I'm going to do it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just create the farming building here because it's a uh, Quite nice then i'm going to actually just uh, remove the actual farming texture which also means that it's not gonna be uh, providing a ton of workspaces i'm actually curious to see if there's gonna be any workspaces and production of produce from this farm given that it doesn't have any uh, like actual farming area now um, but that's that's where i'm gonna start and then i'm gonna see if we can find we can of course find some nice greenhouses here we've actually got um well they're all the same design but it will at least allow us to really customize uh, how it's gonna look uh so let's just see i'm gonna flip these around and i am gonna disable snapping because i don't want any of that and then we're just gonna place uh, a few of these we might even be able to connect them that seems to be the case and i'll add an additional set over here right next to it so if we say that's our start and we move in and add a bit of a different type of surface and i'm probably just gonna do something like this complete this area and then we add in trees of course. That actually looks pretty cool. 
I'm wondering if these do anything. I don't think so, unfortunately. It would be nice if they actually generated some jobs, but uh, yeah, that's probably not the case. And I think on second thought, I am going to actually delete the surface here because it looks it looks a bit odd. Uh, but we can. I should probably add in a few paths though to give like easy access to the actual greenhouses. And I think to make this even nicer, um, I'd add like a small dirt path as such, and then go and grab like some kind of warehouse industry plobable. And let's see if we can find something nice. And because this is of course gonna add like additional jobs. And it's just gonna make the farm feel more custom basically. And yeah, it's gonna, hopefully it's gonna compensate some jobs from the jobs not generated by this useless farm. Now, of course, we're also going to have non-useless farms, uh, believe it or not. Uh, vegetable farming, for instance. So I'm going to add another farm here. And what I'd like to do is just try and maintain enough space for uh, small pockets of trees, basically. So instead of going completely close to the highway here or going really close to our um, greenhouse uh, farm at the other end of the lot, uh, I'm just going to go for something like this because that should allow me, especially with anarchy, to still fill in a bunch of trees here. And I really want that. Uh, something I really notice when looking at many US states, but especially like Massachusetts, is that uh, the state has been able to really maintain a lot of its forests. Uh, I don't know if they're like replanted after the Industrial Revolution, where they might have spent it all on timber or used it all for timber. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there's a ton of forest in the state, uh, in between farms, in between like commercial areas. Uh, residential areas at least and yeah you guys know i'm a sucker for forests in general uh, i am danish so i'm completely starved for nice forests but um, this is a much more ideal look to me than having the farm fields kind of occupy the entire lot and removing all the trees uh, reminds me I need to buy these tiles actually <laughs> i've been using anarchy so far and i don't really mind using anarchy uh, especially when we build infrastructure at least. Um, but fortunately, we've got tons of tiles we can buy, so let's just go ahead and, and buy more or less all the stuff we're going to be needing out here. And it's time to add in another farm, and yeah, want to keep as much forest as possible in between the farms as well. We've got a bit of an interesting space down here, uh, which I think would be a good spot for maybe another vegetable farm. Uh, so I'm gonna do the very same thing here, add it, and then uh, have no snapping on for the actual farm field, so that I ensure that we've got um, we've got room for trees here alongside the road. But then as we move over here, we can go a little closer to the road. And the cool thing with anarchy, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is that we can really create a massive farm here uh, and that's yeah just looks a little cooler from above and it's a little more realistic as well some of these farms in real life uh, grow absolutely massive so i think that would make sense and then let's just enable snapping because that makes following the roads very very easy there we go and I think that looks pretty nice. We do need the trees for this to look real nice though. So we're using our tree of choice, which is as usual, the oak. And by far my favorite tree, uh, especially in City Skylands 2, because it's so thick. Freudian slip. And we'll of course add in a bunch of spruce as well and just made it all a little more interesting than just the oaks here but I, I really like to cover up the like edges of the of the farms with uh, with some trees because 
the transition sometimes it does feel a little rough adding in a few hickories as well and then i think there's a yeah that the terrain here is completely bonkers so we're gonna have to smooth that out as well now that i think is a really nice farm and really highlights just how much flexibility you get by using an anarchy mod you can really uh, do things as you want to and having such an awkward space be a farm like this um, i think it looks really good I'm going to try my hand at another custom farm and this time uh, i'm gonna place it at a bit of a an interesting spot here i'm going to create it here and then we'll jump in and pretty much reduce the size of the this farm or the uh, like the, the regular farming texture completely and then what i'd like to do is jump in here and grab this type of grass surface and then let's see if we can get some snapping going we can and i'm gonna snap to these roads here and i'm gonna break up the farm in smaller like sub farms basically if that makes any sense at all so for now we're just gonna try and create the initial one here great and then we're gonna have a break here where we can have some trees and then create another segment and i don't want to go too close to the power lines uh, because i'm gonna remove all the trees in a small area next to the power lines in just a second and uh, because they should be cleared of trees so let's see if i can get this to work right now it looks <laughs> yeah looks uh super odd but let's just clear these fields here i don't know what you'd actually grow here but let's just clear them of trees and i'm gonna go ahead and clear the, the power lines of trees as well so that we've got complete opening for them this always looks so cool when you find these areas on google maps so now we get to recreate it and I'm going to add in some bushes, uh, small clusters of bushes instead, uh, so that it's not completely barren and just grass underneath. But for now, the most important thing is just uh, getting rid of the trees. And there's uh, something very odd going on here. I'm actually just going to draw it out a bit differently. And try to maintain as much distance as possible between the actual towers. And then we are going to clean out. Oh man, this just looks so cool. It's a small thing, but to me, ah, shift's kiss. <laughs> Anyways, we've, uh, we've got a little farm down here. So let's just kind of... Let's see, we've got three different heights and we are going for random rotation. So let's just kind of frame in this farm here. I'll add in some, uh, I'll add in some oaks. You guys know I will add in some oaks as well, just to get a bit of randomness in there, of course. And I think when you're building these countryside areas, then you can of course strive to make it look great up close but the real thing is of course when we zoom out and we get a view such as this uh, that's really where these i feel these countryside areas really starts to shine and i think for this farm we can add in uh, a few interesting things let's see if i can spell agriculture uh, because we've got a bunch of different buildings, like storage buildings, for instance, which would be really interesting to add. Uh, let's see, I mean, just adding like something really basic, such as this. Does that actually require industrial zoning? I think it does. Oh, boy. But that shouldn't be a big problem, right? If we add a key wall here. Great. And then we can actually add quite a sizable area here and then just zone it up. And let's see if we can find something else that looks interesting. Oh, this is a chunky thing. 
Uh, maybe do, 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 do something simple, some kind of storage unit. This is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Great. And then we've even got uh, the, oh these are actually just uh, the buildings, but they're like cattle sheds and other things. And I wonder if we can place these. Yeah, we can just place these in in anywhere actually because they're just yeah they're just nothing like the greenhouses so that's pretty cool uh but that certainly added a bit of extra character to uh to the little small uh little uh little farm here is what i'm trying to say <laughs> oh boy yeah i uh i think i'm gonna make room for a uh a tiny town actually or at least like a small commercial strip uh with a few uh houses as well We'll just upgrade a bit of the road here. I'm going to turn this side into a key. And I do the same here just to allow for the type of zoning I want. Same over here. And we really need to build some uh, commercial stuff. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on. So this is like uh, going to be, you know, somewhere you... Somewhere the, the local community goes to shop. And we're gonna add in some housing units as well. In between. And we are even going to add some houses in here as well. Just gonna make sure there's a decent distance between the, the lots. Because there's uh, quite a bit of space out here. Something like that should uh, turn out all right when we hit play. Before we do that, though, we've got uh, we've got a utility situation to take care of because none of this is actually connected to uh, the county's um, sewage systems and water pumping systems. Uh, and the same can be said for our electricity. So let's try to sort out our electricity situation first. This shouldn't be a problem because the Chowder Bay Transformer Station is enabling us to export uh, excess electricity production from the Chowder Bay Clean Coal Power Plant. Uh, the clean is uh, the important, the important thing here. Um, we're we're trans. Uh, let's see, let's see. Before I say anything stupid, I think we are actually services electricity. Uh, we're not making any money on exports. Why is that? Why are we not exporting anything? I'm pretty sure we've got a... Yeah, we do have a connection, but I may have removed it. Uh, oh yeah, I messed it up when we built one of the highway intersections. Uh, anyways, we usually do export uh, electricity uh, here in East County, uh, East Haven County. So if we just build like an additional transformer station over here, then everything should actually be just fine because that should allow for a very easy connection to the main electricity grid. So if we do this, then I'm going to run some power lines throughout this area here. Uh, I'm not going to run them underground and I'm not going to upgrade the highways to have uh, uh, street lighting. So instead, we're actually going to have to run these uh, power lines at street level uh, like this, which should be really cool. I mean, it, it adds something to uh, to the whole rural vibe, at least. And they easily snap to the sides of the roads, so that's very nice. And of course, you guys know that if we enable Anarchy, we can just drag it across. No issue at all. So I'm just going to go down here for now and then make sure I connect up to... Uh, to this small alley here because of course it actually transfers power um, underneath the road and that actually connects up the the rest of this area here i might run the the power line at surface level through some of the the highways here as well just for aesthetics basically but for now i think we're pretty set up for our electricity uh, when i've got uh, kind of rough terrain here i'm just gonna make sure i move in and smoothen it out a bit next up is our water and sewage situation and 
We've got, let's see, we've got an advan uh no wait, this is a treatment plant. Then we've got do, 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 where is it? We've got a water tower to support Chowder Bay. And that's actually it. So pretty impressive from our water tower, but I think this also indicates that we're gonna need uh, an additional um like an additional facility to generate uh, drinking water uh, out here, especially since this is a farming area. So I, I imagine that uh, the farms in particular would use quite a bit of water uh, for the day to day work. So let's see what options we have. I could build another water tower, but we've actually also got some groundwater. Uh, some a few groundwater deposits, uh, some here, which is actually within our buildable area. So that's pretty sweet. Let's let's actually go ahead and create that. Uh, I think we're just gonna go for a. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go for an alley road, and we're gonna move in here. We'll create a bit of a curve. Add that in. Then let's see if we can connect this, if I can disable snapping so that we can uh, move a bit further back from the road. Probably going to look pretty cool. Yoink. It does look pretty cool. And we add something cool here. Extra pump. It's probably not going to be necessary. Uh, but I'm thinking some type of like... Uh, warehouse industry, which is probable. Now, let's see. Just to add an additional structure out here to this facility. Uh, doesn't have to be a big one, but I guess actually having uh, something like this would be pretty cool. For this area out here. So we're just going to flip this. Make sure it's as, as aligned as possible. And just place that here, I think. Yeah. Can we add in a small roundabout at the very end here? We can. And since we have Anarchy enabled, we can have it real close to uh, to the actual facility. I love Anarchy so, so much. And I don't know do if you would actually... Like, would you have manicured grass surrounding this? you actually have something keep the grass nice i mean it is a public workplace you probably have you know a good good pension scheme stuff like that if you work out here so i'm thinking that uh, a place like this actually looks all right i mean we've uh, discussed before massachusetts is a very rich state uh, i imagine working within the public sector in massachusetts is uh, pretty nice you can correct me <laughs> if I'm completely wrong uh, in the comments, feel free. Uh, but for now, I am actually going to do a bit of detailing of our water treatment plant, making it, oh, sorry, our groundwater um, pumping plant, <laughs> making it look a little nicer, which may be complete overkill, but yeah, here we are detailing it up. Sweet. Now it goes without saying that it's not worth much if we don't actually connect some pipes to it. There you go. And of course, for the actual treatment of our wastewater, I'm thinking we're going to have to route it all to the uh, Chowder Bay treatment plant over here because it's a very expensive piece of infrastructure and it has a very high capacity. So we're going to we're going to connect to the Chowder Bay water grid uh, anyways, so let's just go ahead and do that. And yeah, I'm just gonna follow some somewhat follow underneath the bridge here. Ooh, big town. Let's check. We've unlocked some high density housing now, uh, which is very interesting. I don't think I'm going to be adding that uh, at the moment because that is skyscrapers or high rises at least. And yeah. We'll see soon. I've already added a couple over here, uh, a redevelopment project at the marina. I just, yeah, I just thought they were a good fit, even though they're uh, by far the tallest structures in the in the re in the county uh, as of now, at least. Anyways, a uh, bit of a tangent uh, for the the pipes. I'm just gonna, you know, 
move underneath the, the roads where they belong. Uh, nothing fancy like for the electricity system. We're just gonna move, yeah, underneath the roads. And I should think that by now, with these things taken care of, we should be able to hit play and actually uh, let this new area be an integrated part of East Haven County. We're also instantly seeing uh, some commercial developments here in this little little town. I guess we'll just kind of just make sure it's its own little entity here. Uh, Brightwater Springs. Yeah, whatever. Uh, let's create some more farms. Uh, we'll ooh, wait. We're we've got a bit of a power situation here, so I'm gonna have to yeah map out more electricity cables, and then we'll create some additional farms as well. We've got a very large spot here. Grab some vegetable farming. Let's see. Enable some snapping, of course. And see if we can snap to this place. And then we're really just going to create a massive farm here. We're not going to go quite up to the train tracks. We're going to leave just a bit of distance so we can have a line of trees in between. And we might even have uh, raw trees here as well. Just because. And that is quite quite a chunky farm, I would say. And we'll create a row of spruces here. Just to flank the entire farm, actually. A few oaks, because... Because what else? And it even created like a greenhouse of its own, so that's a pretty good fit. And while we end this area, I'm going to add like a small farm down here as well. At uh, this time around, we're once again just going for lovable residential low. Just gonna go for a house we can place out here. This one looks really nice. And we'll just add like a makeshift farm. Just a small piece of land that is uh, a part of this property. We'll need to remove the trees. And it would be nice if there are like some uh, stuff for keeping horses, animal horse. Oh, oh, that didn't work. We can actually spawn horses. That's, I guess, I mean, that's pretty cool. But um, maybe just some, like, uh, storage, small storage, something, something. If I can actually find something I like. This one is pretty nice. And then I'll just move that back a bit so that it aligns. And this time around, I'm just trying to frame it with bushes. Just gonna see how that looks. Pretty nice, actually. Alright, was a bit of a shaky way getting to it, but uh, I think that looks pretty nice as well. And look at the view these guys have. Actually, let's just help clear that up a bit for them. That's more like it. That is very idyllic. And with this overall location in mind, very close to two cities and some fantastic stunning views, uh, I think I'm going to build a pretty nice subdivision out here, uh, like a replant division with the same type of houses kind of dominating. We've already got this road here, which is fine. I'm just going to add a cul-de-sacs basically to each end and then uh, as a planned subdivision we're gonna go for a low residential let's go eu and see what we can find actually and let's go for a pretty high level 
Uh, we need something that actually looks good, has a decent lot size. These are actually pretty nice. 4x5s, these 4x4. Uh, let's see what we can find. Has to kind of go for like a American vibe as well. Maybe the 4x4 is actually exactly what we want. I think I'm going to grab this one. Then I'm going to disable snapping so that I can move it as far away from the alley road here as possible. So let's see. And then I'm just going to place them with a bit of distance in between, of course. Because uh, I imagine this is kind of upscale. And I think this is going to look really, really cool. Let's just have a look from afar. I will have to move uh, a few out here or actually squeeze in an additional one. So we'll just grab, grab it anew. see if we can get a few more in here this is probably the best location the views are gonna be absolutely insane out your back window oh yeah that's fantastic um what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna do a bit of terraforming because they've got some pretty uneven uh surfaces now let's see if this is actually yeah that pretty much cleared that up So that certainly helped quite a bit. And then I'm going to go in with the surface tool. I'm going to grab this manicured uh, grass surface here. And then I'm just going to try and add it to the entire road here. And this won't make sense until I'm finished. And then I'll see if I'll actually keep it. And I'll have to add in a ton of trees as well for it to actually look nice. But I'm thinking that if this is like a pretty upscale development, uh, then you would have like a groundskeeper that maintains the area. But uh, we'll see how this looks when I'm actually done. It's uh, I'm just taking a bit of a chance here. Let's see. We complete this. Okay. And then we'll need to cover up by adding a bunch of trees and of course that actually does take a bit away from the view i'm gonna try and not go too hard with big trees behind the the houses that are adjacent to the to the sea at least not too much uh, but i guess if if there's something blocking your view and that's a nice uh forest then uh, that's probably something you can live with and I'm just gonna check how that looked, how this looks adding adding in the grass. And uh, I'm thinking if we actually add in like, uh, like a, a small like a set of like a row of birch, then that's going to really add to it, make it look even better. At least I think that's gonna make the the well manicured grass make a little more sense here. Okay, let's have a look. I think that looks pretty nice. Uh, something we could do to just add bit of extra character or make this area even more desirable uh, I think would be to add like maybe a, a few small paths out here or something like that but that's also gonna maybe look a little odd so I think for now this is fine and as we zoom out that's kind of the look I wanted to achieve all right we're still uh we still got quite a bit of land that I want to develop in this episode, so let's get a bit of a move on.
Okay, I think it's time for a little tour. Uh, tried to do different type of farms to create a uh, super unique look. Uh, tons of flowers being cultivated here. Do you say that? Cultivating flowers? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, this is a pretty unique farm if you ask me. Uh, and as expected, uh, when I've reduced the, the district size or whatever you call it of the uh, vanilla farm, the employee count is one, but I can sort of compensate by adding in a few industrial buildings here and there 
um, at least when companies move in, uh, these are going to provide uh, workspaces. Uh, we've got a bunch of apple trees here, uh, use different types of surfaces. So here uh, we've got, what's this? This has to be the forestry surface actually, which I think is a pretty good fit. I split up the field into two, so there's a bit of a different surface down here as well. Um, and overall, yeah, pretty happy with how this turned out. I'm, I've expanded the uh, like a low density uh, residential areas of Bridgewater Springs. Uh, and added in a few additional areas here and there to just kind of showcase how uh, suburban sprawl is slowly but surely encroaching on what used to be uh, only far farmland or forest. Uh, so it's a bit of a, a mix now and you know in like a couple of decades time most of this might be suburban sprawl actually. Um, but I think that's a pretty natural development for fast growing uh, counties or at, at least and I'd like to think East Haven is one such with a very high standard of living. Um, if we move down here, then the, the final bit I built was this office park. I figured that I'd just try build a build a custom office park and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It's right near the uh, like this interchange uh, getting onto Massachusetts Route 28. So I think it's a pretty good location. And I see that I messed up something somewhere because this got turned into Spruce Highway, and I definitely don't want it to be named that. Uh, seems like I've fixed it now, so that's good. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with what we've got so far. Um, feels feels pretty unique. And I guess there's at least one more thing I've got to do before I wrap up this episode, as I've just realized we don't have any firefighting capabilities uh, within East Haven County at all. We got most other services covered, not necessarily sufficient, but covered somewhat nonetheless, uh, but no firefighting capabilities. And I'm guessing there's quite a long wait for uh, neighboring cities to come to our aid. And it's a bit of a, an issue because we've got a big fire going on here. And I've just noticed that there's also a, a house that basically just, oh man, waiting for a hearse. This is, this is pretty morbid <laughs> that just uh, burnt down. So we need some uh, some fire station stuff and i'm thinking that i'm actually gonna unlock the big fire station and place it in chowder bay uh now it's not necessary it's way too large but i haven't actually seen it used before so i'm figuring i'd like to try and use it then so let's just see it should be a whoa whoa, whoa. it's um it's a huge asset oy, oy, oy. okay Let's uh, add a key wall here. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a substantial asset, isn't it? But I think that's fine. That's fine. We'll... Uh, lots of upgrades. Let's just get a helipad. Cool. That should have us covered for fires in the future, at least. Although over here, it is starting to look kind of... Kind of bad. Can you, uh, like, please dispatch some stuff? Hello? Hello? Firefighters? Ah, oh, there you go. And it's actually the helicopter. Let's just uh, follow... Follow along here. So, is there any animation to actually put out these fires? Oh, Oh, there is! That's nice. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of water for a relatively small chopper, but alright. Okay, things are... Oh, there's a bit of a fire over here as well. Things are rebuilding, and since this is a 2x2 two mixed use lot it's probably gonna be the exact same as it we uh, get to see again uh, but at least the helicopter seems pretty efficient and it's got a, a it's got a ton ton of water can you put this out yeah nice okay so enough fooling around 
that's a wrap for the episode uh, hopefully this turns out to be a pretty good investment i guess the chopper is actually really useful given the layout of this map uh, where we've got these large bodies of water that the fire engines would have to cross so if we've got a forest fire out here uh, it's gonna be quite a bit easier for the chopper to get here in time so yeah uh, and it's a cool asset so yeah that's pretty much why i picked it anyways it's been a ton of fun creating uh, the countrysides out here we are of course gonna add more of this uh, as we start exploring uh, more islands uh, most of the islands are probably going to be more urban than rural, uh, given the limitations in size. But some of them are going to have a more countryside, rural feel. Uh, and I hope to make them really, really cozy. I'm going to shoot some uh, hopefully nice cinematics for you guys now. Uh, if you got a suggestion uh, for what we should name this area, a bit of a backstory, then please let me know. But otherwise, hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.